everybody welcome back to the channel nice to see you again i thought today we could have a quick run through of the fish rooms we haven't done a fish room tour in a while and i have some new additions that i'd like to show off because i'm particularly excited by a couple of them but it's been a while since i've shown you what's going on here since we turned the fish room into an office so let's have a look so the focus of the fish room certainly at the moment anyway is this monstrosity this is what i've called mega tank if you've been joining me on any of my live streams, you'll know the trials and tribulations I've had with this over the year. Um, so yeah, it's an eight foot by four foot by three foot, um, the, the volume of the water anyway, um, plywood DIY tank. I've done this with liquid rubber on the inside rather than the, the usual normal suggested route of um, some kind of fiberglass and epoxy, pond armor, that kind of thing. Had some issues, I won't bore you with them now but it's watertight it has been full for nearly two weeks now so i'm really close to starting to think about stocking it which is proving harder than building the thing in the first place but yeah so it's a big massive tank two and a half thousand liters of water there or thereabouts maybe a little bit more and um, filtration underneath has a upcoming project but it's working well but this thing here you can see i have a kind of temporary DIY desk setup. I've moved in here basically. I do my, I work from home, I work in IT. This is now my office. Because it's nice and warm in here because of the lovely radiator. So we've got the, the desk, I've got my laptop and a second screen and I can sit in here, work, do my normal job, but also enjoy the rest of the fish room. And I have to be honest, that, that element of the office having it in the fish room and spending so much more time in the fish room, even though I'm not dedicating the time to the fish or the tanks, just being in and around the tanks has been so much more beneficial for well both the fish and me. I can do water changes while I'm working. I'm not coming down here to do tasks necessarily. I can enjoy, I can just turn around if I'm getting stressed at work, turn around and see a, a lovely tank and see some fish and see what they're getting up to. Just spending time here and seeing the behaviour of the fish has increased my enjoyment of the hobby so much more. So with that in mind, this is what I can see from my chair. So if I'm working away at the computer, I can turn to my left and we met by this tank straight away. This is where the gold SOM is living for the moment. Um, it's sold as a green terror, but I think it's a gold SOM. He's in there being grumpy as hell and killing anything else I put in there with him. So he has some definite anger issues. But he's in there chilling. Originally this was going to be some kind of South American tank, mega tank. And that might be one of the things we put in there when he grows up a little bit. But above him is possibly one of my favorite tanks in the fish room. I've, I've escaped this. It's a nice display tank. Um, it's obviously got the dwarf neon rainbow fish in it and a bunch of black Schultze Corridoras. And there's a queen arabesque pleco in there as well. It's just a nice tank. It looks good. It's usually busy. I don't know why all the fish are cornered in that corner at the moment. They're normally swimming back and forth. Um, it's just a nice tank to look at. It's quite a relaxing, simple scape, simple setup, simple fish. Lovely. Over here, we've got various things going on. So a few empty tanks. We've got a few endlers, guppies, shrimps, and there's some uh, zebra danios in that tank and more guppies and shrimps over in the other tank. I don't want to gloss over them because they all have their own merits. Um, and there's some cool fish, some blue neon gobies up in that tank there. Dwarf gobies. A fish I forget the name of, which we'll put in the description in that tank there. They're just cool little nano fish. Um, I wanted to try them just as kind of breeding projects to see if we could get anything going, see whether they would be happy or not. Not really anything happening as such, but yeah, they're doing their thing, they're cool. Uh, and this is obviously, as I say, the endlers, guppies, shrimp, little factories. And that's that corner of the fish room. If I spin around a little bit more, these tanks are currently empty. Well, apart from the one in the end that has the angelfish. Um, they've just got plants and things in them at the moment, waiting for more things to happen. Currently, the discus tank, the discus display tank that should be upstairs, a new one has arrived, so these will be moving up there shortly. 
but at the moment they're just chilling out in here with me. Happy enough. But I can't wait to get them back upstairs and get them into their proper tank. But yeah, they're chilling out in here. Directly behind me, my good friend Humphrey. You alright bud? Yeah. He likes to keep an eye on me while I'm working and while I'm doing my thing. He knows all the secrets. <laughs> Spying over my shoulders with the laptop. But yeah, he's in there. He's happy enough. A couple of people have mentioned recently he's, his tank is too small. So if I show you this. Oh, if I zoom out even properly. His tank is, it is quite a big tank. It's, I want to say it's... I'm sorry, the Microsoft batteries died at this point and I didn't notice, so I rambled on. I want to say this tank is just shy of four feet. So it's four feet by two feet by 18 inches or something like that. This tank, the discus are in, that actually is four feet. Maybe it's just a bit over actually in the same dimensions. So Humphrey might get that tank, but it's not showing any signs of stress or any, any behavior that would make me think his tank is too small so we should be okay for a while and then obviously over here we've got the goldfish tank this is the fish that i took in from my little pond i just didn't feel the pond was big enough or deep enough to let them overwinter loads of spawning behavior that i've been able to see in here in fact some of it you can see now so i've got a lot of java moss in there to see if i can capture some of the eggs and maybe move them into one of the other tanks see if we can get a bit more breeding projects going um, but yeah, they're doing okay as well, but it's up on the top shelf where we've got the new stuff that I'm excited about. So up the top, we've got a row of five tanks, um, some new, some old. Let's start with this one. This is the, the problem area. This is the pee puffer tank. There were, my pee puffers were in here, but I was fighting a losing battle with algae. So I decided to just strip it all down completely and see all the detritus and carnage left over. So I've moved the pee puffers over here and I added a few as well. Um, the idea was to get a breeding program. I have bred them before without me doing anything at all. But as soon as I start to do it as an intent, they have not seen any <laughs> anything happen at all. But they're nice, they're fat, they're healthy, um, they're active. I really enjoy keeping these fish. I just, I'm not quite sure how I managed to get them to breed in the past, but not anymore. So I think I've got 12. There's four of them in there that you could see, but they're, they're, they're bombing around. I'm going to do a bit of a, an update to this tank, get some more plants and decorations and give them some good nourishment um, of environment. Get them fed up. I feed them a variety of things from small snails to to be fixed, Daphnia, uh, blood worms occasionally. But yeah, they seem they're anti focus machines, but they seem to be nice and fat and healthy. So hopefully it's just a case of time. Otherwise, I might just have a group of all males or all females. I need to have a bit of a closer look. This tank here is where the new thing is that I'm quite excited about, so but we'll come back to that. In here is just plants. These are all the plants that I took out of the discus display tank that leaked, so they're just in a holding pattern down here until I get ready for them. Um, so they'll go when the discus back upstairs, I'll move the plants back upstairs as well. That should be good. Here is a tank that I've had set up for a while. It's going to be a shell dwellers tank if I can ever find any bloody shell dwellers. <laughs> I keep following leads and being disappointed, so we haven't got anything in there yet. But in here, I made a bit of a... What do you call it? An impulse purchase? Not that you can see that. But in there is a black ghost knife fish. A tiny, tiny, tiny one. I used to have one that was a good 18 inches uh, before he died or she died. Um, I think they're cool as all hell. They are the most interesting movements I've ever seen in fish, the way they, they move around. So we're going to get another one. Oh, well, I have got another one. Not that you can see him. Um, again, this is just a holding tank. I'll get something more permanent for him once I start moving some more fish around. I just wanted something plain, empty-ish. He's got somewhere to hide and then I can see him feeding and make sure everything's all right without him being constantly hiding. Um, but yeah, we'll move him into another tank a bit more suitable as he grows up. And then this tank over here, you might just be able to see a splash of colour. I'll see if I can get a 
closer look. A cactus pleco, my best purchase of the day. So a bit of an impulse buy. He's probably six inches, maybe a little bit more. Um, I'm just blown away by the colours and the markings and the shapes. And I do love a good pleco. I don't know all that much about him. I'm not sure whether it is a leopard cactus or some one of the other variants. But I do know a freshwater ichthyologist who might be able to help me out. Go and check out her channel while you're there. Um, but I, I do like a, I do like a pleco. They kind of divide everyone. They're either they're ugly as hell or cool as hell. So I think they're definitely a bit of both. But a good centerpiece fish. Or a good supporting fish, possibly going in the discus tank. I don't know. I'm sure everyone will be furiously taking comments going, No, don't do that! But from the limited research I've done since I've got it, it might work. He looks cool as hell. So that's just a quick run through of everything that we've got in my little fish room at the moment. Obviously we've got lots coming up. We've got mega tank to stock out. We've got a new display tank to fill up and set up. We've got filtration projects to do. We've got all kinds of things coming up. So if you're interested in this kind of thing at all, click that subscribe button and uh, you won't miss any more videos. Click the bell to get notifications. Every Friday, most Fridays at 9 p.m. UK time, we do a live stream, sometimes from down here. Come and join us on that and ask any questions you want. Other than that, I'll see you in one of the upcoming videos because there's got a lot going on. So, see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye!